Hello guys, I've gotten several questions about how I do something I call the directory install. Well, the directory install is a way that you can play Minecraft using multiple instances. It's really useful when you're doing something such as a mod pack, like the Zop SMP. So today, I'm going to show you how to set up a directory install mod pack. So the first thing you want to do is to find a location to put your new directory mod install. What I will do is I have a nice folder here on my E drive for mod packs. So all you have to do is just make a new folder and call it whatever your mod packs name is going to be. In this case, we're going to be installing cogs and cauldrons uh, new update, sure. And we can just open that right up. The next thing you're going to want to do is you want to open up your .minecraft folder. Uh, this can be found by typing in percent app data percent in the Windows search bar. I've already got it pulled up. I got it shortcutted over here. But what you want to do is you're going to want to find the resource packs folder and you're going to want to find the options folder. If you have Optifine, you'll want the Optifine and the shader packs and a bunch of other stuff. But for this basic install, we're just going to want resource packs and options. We're just going to take those, right? And we're going to copy them and then we're going to paste them control c control b um as you can see it's going to take a bit for mine to install because my resource packs quite big and then you're going to want to right click here make a new folder and call it mods the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to install the fabric launcher you can get it at fabricmc.net i will try to remember to put the link in the description but you can just click download here and then download for windows and download it wherever uh, I've already got it downloaded here in mod packs, and then you're going to want to run this. All right, so now that it's up, we're going to want to be installing whatever version we're going to be playing on. In our case, it's 1.18.2 on 0.14.11. All of this should be good. You're going to want to make sure your Minecraft launcher is completely closed. It cannot be open, can't be running anything. Then you want to click install. And just like that, we've installed the Fabric API. So now that Fabric's installed, we're going to want to open up the Minecraft launcher and open up this folder here. Once you have the Minecraft launcher open, you're going to want to hit installations. We're going to click new installation. We're going to call it the name of the mod pack. So cogs and cauldrons. Update it. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the image. Uh, you can put whatever you want. You can do a custom image. We're just going to do redstone block, sure. We're going to want to switch this to fabric, release fabric loader 0.14.11 or whatever fabric loader version you were using. Or this also works for Forge. Next, you're going to see game directory. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and we're just going to copy this and we're going to paste it here. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to open up task manager, which can be found here, or if you click control shift escape on Windows and go to performance, you can find your maximum memory count. This number on the right is the maximum amount you want to be able to go to. You do not want to go above this amount. And for me, I've got 48 gigabytes of RAM. However, you do not need that many. I typically would suggest putting 8 gigabytes if you have it, or 4 if you don't have 8 gigabytes of RAM, if possible, here, just by typing the number there. So next, hopefully you've already downloaded the mod pack. We're going to scroll down here. And you can find the version here that you just made. We're going to go back to play. We're going to scroll all the way down on this. And we're going to click that. We're going to reopen up this folder. We're going to go back and grab whatever mod you have. In our case, we got Cogs and Cauldrons here. When you open it up, you should see a list of mods. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to Cogs and Cauldron New Update, open up the mods, and we're going to install all of our mods right here, dragging and dropping them right there. Now that we have all the mods installed, all we have to do is go back over here and click play. It will give you a warning. It's just playing modded Minecraft or old versions. Just click play and there you go. You've installed a directory install. There's a couple other things that you may have wanted to move over though. If you would like to move over your servers, you simply have to open up your .minecraft or other directory install that you want to copy it from and drag over and copy over servers.dat. I will not be doing this as I'll be entering the IP manually. Let's say we want to update a directory install. 
what I would do is I'd make a new folder labeled old three. Supposing that this update updates mods and not just adds new ones. If it just adds new ones, you can just paste, put all the new mods in here like it would be nothing. But we're going to move them to old three. Now we're going to go back to your mod list and we're going to open those up. Actually, that's the wrong one. This one. Put the new mods in here. And just like that, you've updated your old one. Now, in some cases, you'll need an updated fabric. In this case, I do need an updated fabric. And so what I will do is I will go to installations, find my old one, stop SMP 1.18.2 fabric, cogs, and cauldrons, edit, and update this to the new version of the fabric load. Then I just click save and I can click play. And just like that, your new directory install is completed. Now you can get on Minecraft and play some Zop SMP. That being said, there's a couple things I should mention. While the directory installs work great for mod packs, they do come at a slightly larger storage cost. But overall, I think it's worth it as you can run multiple instances with different controls, different versions, and different mods without having to switch out the mods every single time. It may be a little bit of work to set up, but it is definitely worth the effort. And with that, I am off. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and I hope to see you on the Zop SMP sometime soon.